Oh man, my son is loving this video stuff, right? Hey, uh, real quick, we'll do a short video on float switches. Um, I'm going to install a, another float switch on my air handler in my attic because it sits kind of right over my bedroom and bathroom, okay? So float switches, if you remember, they are there to detect if the emergency overflow pan uh, that we put underneath our unit and you can see here you can see mine my air handler is sitting over a small sheet metal pan that is designed to uh, catch any water uh, should my primary drain line clog up so uh, I'm gonna show you a few things small little short videos the first one's gonna be on installing a float switch uh, and then I'll take the cover off and show you how to wire it in and check it out okay so uh, First things first, we got to make sure it works. Okay, so how do we make sure that a normally closed safety is normally closed? Well, we have to do continuity on it, right? So I'm going to set this down right here on the side of my pan. I've got my um, I got my meter set to continuity, and I'm going to check each so it beeps. So right now my switch is closed. Now what I also need to do is make sure that it opens. And if you remember, there's a little knob on the side of this one that um, it will uh, let me test this uh, switch um, even when there's not water. There we go. So, so you can see here that little pull pin on the side is there to, uh, to check the switch. It's closed, so it's beeping. Open, open, open. And you get the idea, right? So what we're gonna do now is, uh, real quick, uh, if you ever come across a customer that, that has a unit in the attic and they do not have some type of water detection device to, uh, to protect them from uh, an overflow of water, uh, I would suggest that you inform them of the possibility and the consequences of not having uh, one. And, uh, and sell them one if need be, okay? Uh, I'm not trying to advertise or advocate just selling people stuff, but this will uh, help you a whole lot. So I'm gonna take off the cover. Oh. All right, so here goes the inside of my air handler. I've got a good old PSC motor. We'll talk about that. Uh, in another video but um, I'm gonna put this float switch a little further back uh, about halfway back I've already got one uh, and that's okay but I want a second one so I that's what I'm gonna install here right so I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this one a little further back right and I'm gonna screw it tight to uh, can you see that don't zoom in so I'm going to attach it to the side, and uh, so it sits inside the pan. The switch has free movement, and I'm going to run my wires um, up here to the side, which I've already had a knockout. Okay, so what do we do with the two wires uh, for the float switch uh, once we um, once we run them inside the air handle? Uh, what I like to do is to break the power circuit. I like to break R. That way, if I have any problems with water, it kills power to all low voltage devices, thermostat, zone board, whatever, right? Um, I don't have to. Uh, the other option is to break the Y circuit. Uh, you want to stop the circuit that's producing the condensate, the water, which is going to be your cooling circuit. And that's the season that we're coming into now. So uh, you have two choices, break the R circuit or break the Y circuit, but I prefer to break R because if you only break the Y, then you can still run the fan and have a false sense of hope, I guess. Um, or just run your power bill up when you, when you could, you could just break the R circuit and have a, a, a dead thermostat. It's an easy identifier, um, quickest way to identify that you have a, pro a problem with power, something's going on with the unit. So I'm gonna break mine on R, all right? And if you come in here, you come in, son, come on. Come on, zoom on, sit on down, sit on down, All right? So here's our low voltage. We got our fan. I don't want to mess with that. I've got my common, which is blue, and I, I hate, but that's the way the guys put it in. I've got my green wire, or my yellow wire, okay? 
and I've got this red wire. Now you can see here, here's the red wire going uh, from the transformer uh, and they're going to this first float switch that's over here on the side. So uh, when it comes back, okay, when that float switch comes back, one wire out, one wire back in, you can see here that, that it goes to my, my red thermostat wire, okay? Goes into my thermostats and, and so on. So I'm gonna break the connection between the 24 volt power source and the, the first float switch with another float switch. And I'm gonna do this with the power on. Um, just make sure you don't touch anything, right? So it's real simple. I'm gonna break the circuit. And you could do this with the Y circuit or whatever, right? And I'm going to connect my float switch with theirs on one end. And using a separate wire nut, I'm going to connect power to the other side. Oh, let me get that wire out here. The other side here. And you can hear my zone board in the back clicking. There we go. So if you look over here at my zone board, right, I've got a couple LED lights on. So I could retest this switch again by pulling it up. And you can see it just killed power to the whole thing. Uh, that would simulate water rising in the pan and it would kill the power. Uh, if I release the little test switch on here, you see my zone board comes back on. Okay, so that's a good indication that it works. Always test the components that you put in. Um, what I'm going to do after this, right? I'm gonna slide right here. Find my handy dandy notebook. That's right, I said handy dandy notebook. Where did my. There it goes. I hate loose connections. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this zip tie around. Uh, those wires just so they don't just so they don't pull down and out okay so right here around both sets of those float switch wires I'm just gonna go ahead and put a small zip tie right just so it's uh, just so there's not any stress on that wire nut right and then I'm gonna trim trim the excess off take my trash with me uh, and basically I'm gonna put the cover back on and that's it. So, uh, there's how to put a float switch in. Um, you could, uh, you could do this. No professional experience required. Just a little bit of common sense. So that's it. Uh, I'm not going to show you putting the panel back on cause we're going to do something else.